Hello everyone and welcome to an incredible game from round 10 of this year's Tata Steel. We already saw what happened in the game Nepo versus uh, Ding Lira and it was a sort of a throwback to the World Chess Championship match. Uh, Nepo, uh, well, delivered a, a very strong victory there. If you haven't seen it, it's the previous video, so do check it out. Uh, but now it's Max Varmerdam versus Nodirbek Abdusatarov. First game that we are going to cover today as it's a rest day, so we do have time to check up on the other games. And of course, we are also going to check out the game uh, Gukesh versus Donchenko. Uh, so let's uh, dive straight into it it's uh it's a, it's a complicated game so i'm sure you guys will enjoy it and we already have a d4 on the board so d4 by max uh, and pawn to d5 by noderbeck we have pawn to c4 uh, d captures on c4 it's been uh, a few times already that noderbeck boldly accepted the queen's gambit knight to f3 uh sorry knight to f3 knight to f6 and now pawn to e3 with bishop to g4 uh, and now bishop captures on c4 so very standard stuff here nothing um out of the ordinary, pawn to e6, we have castles, knight b to d7, and now knight to c3. We have pawn to c6, uh, fighting for that d5 square, and the bishop back to e2, so you don't have to worry about this bishop, now you can even move the knight. We have bishop to e7, and there are a couple of uh, games that reach this position, but here we have pawn to b3 by Max, and it is now as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. So, okay, Noderbeck castles, we have bishop to b2, continuing development, rook to c8, and now pawn to h3 asking what do you what do you do with the bishop here so Noderbeck just goes back and rook to c1 continuing development with knight to d5 uh, and now knight to d2 offering a trade of light square bishops but Noderbeck says nope uh, my bishop will be very strong on this diagonal and your bishop isn't really doing all that much so knight d to e4 uh, and uh, pawn to f5 now. Noderbeck uh, ch chases the knight away from this active e4 square. This does weaken the e6 pawn, but uh, he's claiming that Max will not have um, uh, a way of reaching the e6 pawn. Knight back to d2, and now knight 7 to f6. And uh, if you look at Noderbeck's knights, uh, they are placed a little bit better than, than Max's knights. So this knight on d2 is a bit uh, clunky here, uh, but okay, the knight can come to f3, maybe later on to e5, so, you know, it, it all depends on how he plays it. Uh, we have bishop to f3 hinting that he would uh, very much like to play g3 and bring the bishop back to g2 uh, pawn to b5 and now uh, pawn to a4 attacking the b5 pawn inviting pawn to b4 but pawn to b4 here although it looks nice after the knight moves to e2 it's not uh, it's not all that impressive for example pawn to a5 the knight comes to f4 and already it's a uh, very tricky uh, pawn ca uh, knight captures pawn captures and um uh, you will once this knight lands on c4 it will be a monster there's no b or d pawn to kick it away uh, it will control a very uh, a very important squares from here so instead after a4 we have just pawn to a6 by Noderbeck queen to e2 and now bishop to b4 uh, okay very nice diagonal for the bishop we have pawn to g3 uh, and queen to e8 now you could also activate the queen via the a5 square he decides to go queen to e8 uh, bishop to g2 and now bishop to h5 attacking um, uh, uh, Max's queen here, queen to d3, and now queen to g6. And uh, how do you proceed here? Well, best would be to just bring the knight to f3 and say, okay, that, that nothing is really happening this game. If, um, uh, let's say, bishop captures, bishop captures, so the bishop comes to d6. Okay, it's very nice, but the bishop will come to g2 and... Um, nothing really happening here however after queen to g6 uh max played knight d back to b1 uh, and this allows Noderbeck to go for bishop to d6 and now after knight to e2 he throws in this very nice knight to b4 with an attack on the queen and do you see the big problem here yes the knight is attacking c2 and also the queen from g6 is x-raying the uh, c2 square and this is something you should not allow the queen goes back to d1 and now comes pawn to f4 uh, threatening to, to just start uh, capturing here but also going for that um, uh, not c2 square but knight to d3 and this will come with an attack on the bishop and on the rook uh, no idea why i said c2 okay e captures on f3 he grabs the pawn knight to d3 now attacking the rook and the bishop and now you could go rook to c2 to defend the bishop but this would be wrong and it would be very dangerous if you play this then comes bishop captures on f4 and now look at this knight captures on f4 knight captures g4 trapping the bishop here but it doesn't matter bishop captures h captures knight captures and now the only way to stop checkmate here uh, is to bring the queen to f3 to have access to f3 but now you have to give up the rook on c2 so queen captures rook queen captures knight queen captures bishop 
and you get this position where uh, black is uh, much better black is up material black is uh, up um, it's a uh, six pawns to four he's he has a rook for a bishop so of course completely winning so instead after knight to d3 rook to c3 was played uh, seemingly sacrificing the bishop but okay you will win the knight back uh, the material back, a knight captures on b2 with queen to d2 attacking the knight, and of course Noderbeck will not just give up the knight, he will grab something uh, uh, while he's at it. So b captures um, uh, on a4, and now bishop to b4, uh, trying to win back some material, pawn to g4, trapping the bishop, and of course Noderbeck um, uh, planned for this. Knight captures, pawn captures, bishop captures, uh, and now knight to g3. You want to put as many pieces in front of the black queen and the white king, so knight to g3 makes sense, and later on uh, you might have knight support for a move like pawn to f5. So here bishop to f5, uh, it was uh, maybe a, a little bit more precise to just trade off the light square bishops, but okay, uh, we have bishop to f5, uh, and now queen to e3 getting the queen out of the pin so now's the time to capture bishop captures on c3 knight captures also the knight gets developed a little bit and now bishop to c2 putting pressure on that a4 pawn so knight c to e4 and now bishop captures on e4 we have uh, knight captures on e4 and now queen to g4 uh, knight to c5, a very nice square for the knight, going after the e6 pawn. So rook to f6, defending the pawn, also preparing rook to g6 to go after checkmate here. And now pawn to a5. Um, you could also just trade here, but uh, Max never shies away from, uh, from a challenge, so he wants to have a complicated position. Later on, he will be able to eliminate the a6 pawn. He will have a nice pass pawn here. But this also means that Noderbeck will uh, have a pass b pawn. So okay, rook to g6, threatening checkmate, and queen to e4 stopping checkmate here uh rook to d8 and now you uh, kind of have to be careful a little bit here because rook captures on d4 can be played uh but uh, white is uh by no means um uh, f forced to recapture with the queen white could also just play queen captures on c6 and keep defending the g2 bishop so okay rook to e1 here and now uh, like I said, this is a possibility, probably a, a very quick draw uh, if it gets played and now the king has to come to f7 to help out with the defense of the pawn and it's probably going to be a draw queen c7, queen b8, queen c7, queen b8 and we will have a draw by threefold repetition. So instead rook to d6, just adding more protection to the pawns, but now king to f1. Very tricky move and it comes on move 40 uh, and uh, you know Max was a very very low on time when he played this, uh, but now his position is winning because the Queen captures and g2 threat no longer comes with checkmate. And now after pawn to b4, we have knight captures on a6, Max creates a pass pawn of his own, and now rook to f6. The problem with rook captures on d4 now is that the queen just captures it, and you don't care about queen captures on g2 because the king just moves away, and you're up a full piece, you also have a pass pawn, of course you are completely winning here. So Noderbeck goes rook to f6, he wants to uh, capture the f4 pawn, and then the d4 pawn, uh, and now we have knight captures on b4. For a slight imprecision by uh, by Max, which still gives him a better position. Knight to c7 was just better. Uh, the, the the idea being that it just guards the queening square. So that's um, to, to give you an example. Let's say rook captures on f4, queen e5. You're gonna play rook f captures on d4. Now pawn to a6, and after rook to d1 looks very strong, but there's pawn to a7. So you have to stop the queening, and after rook d8 you will win that rook because the knight defends the square. Rook captures knight captures, and after rook captures on e1. Queen captures, you have, you're you just up a bishop and knight, of course, completely winning. Uh, however, Max played uh, knight captures on b4, again, better for white, but not as precise. Uh, rook captures on f4, we have queen to b1, and now rook d captures on d4. Uh, so what can Max do now? He plays knight, to, his knight is hanging here, so he plays knight to d3, attacks the rook on f4, rook back to f8. So you can see how this line is not uh, nearly as nice for white as the one I've shown you. Uh, we have rook to e3, uh, and now queen to g5. The idea uh, behind this wonderful move is that, of course, queen captures on uh, e3 is the threat, the f pawn is pinned, but also you just want to eliminate this pass pawn and you don't have time to advance it due to queen captures on e3. So bishop to f3 is played and Noderbeck just eliminates the a5 pawn. So you can see how uh, only a few moves ago you had that line where you could just advance the pawn and queen it, win the rook, and now the pawn is gone. 
So objectively, it's still a draw, uh, but it's very, very complicated. Bishop captures on c6. Uh, we have queen to a6 now attacking the bishop, and the bishop goes back. Bishop to f3. Uh, queen to d6 now, uh, and uh, queen to b3. So again, putting pressure on this diagonal. Rook to f6, defending the pawn and preparing the rook to, to jump into the attack. Uh, king to e2. We have pawn to h6. Uh, you know, uh, creating some breathing room for the for the black king. Uh, bishop to e4, cutting off the king from a dh7 square. We have queen to c7, uh, and now just bishop to g2. We have rook to c4, trying to somehow start checking the white king. Uh, now bishop to h3, saying, okay, you give one check. It's really nothing. I just go back, uh, and um, the, the knight covers the c1 square, so it's not a problem. Uh, queen to c8, uh, and now king back to d2. We have king to h8, and now queen queen to a2. So both players just making moves, hoping the other guy blunders. We have rook to c6, uh, and now queen to b3. Uh, we have queen to a6 uh, here, and uh, queen to b8 with check. So giving up the back rank, uh, but again, it's nothing. We have rook to c8, blocking check, queen back to b3, and now queen to a5 with check. We have king to e2, now queen to h5 with check. Sort of connecting with the bishop, but the rook nicely defends it, so you don't care. King to e1, we have rook to g6, and now bishop captures on e6. Uh, and it looks like um, uh, maybe a move, a move too far, but it's still perfectly fine to capture this. You don't care about the back rank check. Rook to g1 check was played. King to d2, and now rook to d8, not allowing the knight to move. Uh, bishop to h3, uh, and now uh, rook to a1. Uh, here we have bishop to e6, uh, just making moves as there's really nothing to, to do here for black, uh, rook to f1. And here, uh, although the position is still very much a draw, it's very easy to make a mistake. And you should play a move uh, like king to c3, uh, but in the game king to c2 was played. And now look at this, queen to g6 puts pressure on, uh, on the knight here. Still it can be defended, nothing terrible has happened as of yet. King to b2 and now rook to e8. And now you have to play again king back to, uh, to c3 and your position is fine. But who who makes such a move? I mean, it's a... Uh, uh, it's not really a position where you make such a move, and also Max was constantly playing an increment, he was constantly on 30 seconds on the clock, making moves with 5, uh, 3, 4 seconds on the clock, uh, and he played bishop back to c4, which uh, seems like, again, you have nothing, the problem is there is a winning uh, variation here for Nodrebek, uh, so feel free to pause the video and win the game uh, for Nodrebek Abdusatorov while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that you can nicely connect the queen and the rook. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is queen to f6 with check. Uh, it's not very often that our, uh, you know, pause the video moment um, is solved by a check, but sometimes it is the strongest move. So hopefully that did not trick you. And the problem is you don't have queen to c3, not because of rook to b8 check, but because of rook captures on f2 check. And after knight captures and queen captures with check, uh, you nicely connect with this rook here. So whatever you play, let's say you play rook e2 as the bishop uh, guards it, you, you will have to give, give up the rook, whatever you play. Uh, rook captures, bishop captures, queen captures with check, and the two extra pawns will be winning for black. So that's the problem. So after queen f6 check, uh, Max tried king to a3, but now it's a king hunt, and of course on an open board, uh, queen and two rooks, you are not uh, escaping. The, the king hunt will, will be successful. Rook to a1 check, king to b4, now comes rook to b8 check, bishop to b5 and now rook to uh, first queen to d4 with check uh queen to c4 blocking and now a rook to b1 with check and he was in this position on move 71 that max varmerdam resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here you have few more moves let's say king a3 even you can trade queens and then you just get checkmated that's all there is there's no no better way to play this whatever you try here you're just gonna get uh, checkmated uh, so yeah, beautiful stuff by Noderbeck. Uh, tough break for Max in the previous round. We've uh, we've seen what happened in his game against Parham Maxulu. He was winning, then uh, he was winning, then he was winning, and then Parham just won. I mean, that incredible endgame. Who who, who who could possibly calculate that? And now a similar thing here against Noderbeck. I mean, Max played just a wonderful game. He did allow sort of Noderbeck to get uh, uh, the, the upper hand in the beginning, but then he equalized, then he was winning, and uh, yeah. 
uh, not uh, not the best uh, uh, way to, to finish these two games, but what are you going to do? Still three more rounds to go. We'll see what happens. And I will show one more game. I will show Donchenko versus Gukesh, but in case you don't see that one, I will also share the standings uh, 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 and the results uh, with you. So uh, here it is. Uh, sorry, not that. Uh, here are the standings after uh, 10 rounds have been played. So Nodrebek and Gukesh tied in first place with 6.5. Then we have Anish Giri and Pragnananda on 6. With 5.5 we have 4 people. Virit Weiyi, Ali Reza and Yanni Ponishi. Uh, with 4, uh, Parha Maksud, Luju Wenjun, Ding Liren and Max Varmerdam. Uh, and Alexander Donchenko and Jordan Pamporest uh, sharing last place with 3.5 points for the moment. And uh, these are... Uh, okay, I'm not going to show you what happened in uh, all of the game says you know maybe the the result of the next game i'm going to show you is still a mystery to you so you know wait, wait for that uh so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it uh, i would like to thank christopher and ruth burkett uh, uh, anna oliviera mehmet sonmez usman afzal uh, minhas uh, and uh, juega yedres uh, teresa for your contribution to my channel uh, thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you for watching and i will see you soon continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world so thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day gukesh donchenko coming up soon